Hey everyone, Cursed Deck Builder here, making our way to 10,000 decks assisted, and here we have Siren of the Silent Song, the last of our Popper EDH decks. These decks have all been donation decks from Shirok. Thank you so much, Shirok. It's been a blast looking at this different format, seeing all the cards, and imagining what I would play. I think, you know, I asked last time if people are interested in Popper EDH, if they want to see more, if they want to see less. And for me, I've, I've been having fun, but I'm kind of ready to go back to regular commander decks. This stuff is cool, but it is tricky to kind of be building for a different format. I think Silent of the Sil uh, Silent Song is a great one to end with, mainly because I've always liked that art, and I've always wanted to play this card, and that's kind of, I think, the heart of the format. So thank you, Shirok, and let's get right into it. If you'd like to take a look at the deck list we're talking about today, or if you'd like to submit your own deck list to me so that I can make a video assisting your deck, please check the video description down below. So who is Siren of the Silent Song, and why are they our Popper EDH discard commander? Well, this is the Zombie Siren, 3 mana in blue-black. Blue Ooh. Flying, Inspired, whenever Siren of the Silent Song becomes untapped, that's what Inspired does, each opponent discards a card and then puts the top card of their library into their graveyard. So, Inspired was always kind of a weird mechanic. It was really, really cool, but I think printed on really kind of weak cards. And Siren of the Silent Song is one of the stronger ones, especially in multiplayer where an untap with Siren of the Silent Song represents milling three uh, cards, but much more importantly, discarding three cards from your opponent's hand, which is a really, really powerful effect. And this this deck, like, it's, it's kind of a win condition, but not so much. This deck seems to try to use this to control the board or to dampen your opponents in order to pull out some combos or some, like, game-winning strategies that don't defeat your opponents, but put them into situations where they just can't recover. And what am I talking about? Well, Looking at the deck, before going through everything, I think we have to talk about the other card of the deck that's really important, and that's Freed from the Real. This card is almost so ubiquitous with this strategy that it's like a companion that's in the deck. Freed from the Real is an aura that you attach to the, uh, the Siren, and then very, very notably, with these two abilities, you can tap and untap her repeatedly for one blue mana each time. Now, the, what this kind of adds up for two blue mana, you get a trigger. So in twos, you can just start kind of uh, forcing your opponents to discard and mill. But there's another few ways we can kind of take advantage of this, namely with tap abilities, with attacks, and a few other things that I think are really, really good. So a lot of the deck revolves around getting this card and attaching it to our commander. Looking at the curve, I like the curve. It's very, very solid. We have only one six mana card and it has, let me click it. It has island cycling, so it's not even, uh, you know, that hard to use. Now five mana, we have a ninjutsu card and a mutate card, so they're actually four mana cards. So I do like the ramp. I do, I'm mean, sorry, the curve. I like that we have some ramp. Now, I've been kind of hard on all the ramp thus far, but knowing that some of, like, the majority of our deck is built around uh, getting freed from the reel out and triggering that as many times as we can. I think it's actually pretty important to have this ramp, so I'm not going to be too hard on it. 36 lands feels right. Once again, our curve is very, very low. Uh, so generally, I like the deck. There's a few pressure points that I think are a bit weaker, and I would like to kind of poke at. Um, the first thing is, a lot of our power comes from these burglar rat style cards these cards go three for one because we cast this and our opponents discard three cards like total which is particularly strong but before we come back to these cards let's take a quick gander at a few other options that we have that i think are a little weaker duress and Myers toll are the first ones that come to mind where these are targeted discard and sorry targeted discard spells uh, meant to kind of take the cards out of our opponent's hands. The thing is, this is a one-for-one -one trade in a deck that has a really, really hard time gaining that card advantage. So, though I do like them in here because I think they are very, very valuable, they are too narrow, they're one-for-one, -one, and they suffer from a really big problem that all the discard in this deck uh, suffers from. And I think that's very, very notably to oh, target uh, Horrifying Revelation as well 
If this was each player, I would really, really like it, but we do have Vicious Rumors that does that better, so we're fine, so just cut that one. But So all of these cards, all the discards suffer from one particular problem, and that's at a certain point, we're going to have too much of it. Uh, Nizumi Informant, just like Burglar Rat, is a great card that discards three cards from our opponents and gives us a 1-1. One -one. However, what if our opponents don't have cards? Then it's a 2-mana 1-1 one -one and therefore is awful. Am I saying that we need to cut back on these abilities? No, not necessarily, because I think there is a level of uh, critical mass. The first ability of this card, the first kind of Burglar Rat, is just fine, people discarding the worst card of their hand, or at worst, discarding a card they want to discard. The second one gets better, the third one gets even better, and then by the fourth one, your opponents are starting to be hellbent, right? And so, with each one being better, I don't want to start cutting too many of these. However, we should be cutting the ones that are the weakest. So for me, Duress, uh, Horrifying Revelation, Myers Toll are easy to go. Raven's Crime at least is recursible, uh, so you can just keep using it when we flood, and I really like that. But looking over here, we have a few at higher manas. Cackling Fiend is far too much mana for a 2-1 with this ability, so that's a really easy cut. Uh, let's see. Cat Burglar, also way too much uh, mana. If this could have been activated as an instant, I would love it. But here, it's just kind of awful, so we can cut that as well. Lillian Inspector, I think, is fine because it can attack. And I think the rest are fine as well. Generally, I think that's the right amount, but those cuts here and there should be fine. Norit is such, such a specific creature. I love that it's in this deck. What a weird, weird card, but perfect. Looking at a few other things, um, a nerve also, I would say, probably feels a little overkill when we have this ability on so many two mana creatures that we're doing, like, we're already in a, uh, doing really well, and it's not like at Popper they can really interact with us ETBing, so there's no reason to make this a sorcery. I think this could be cut as well. Um, Delirium Skeens does a lot more, so I like it very much. Him to Turok also does a lot more, so I also like it. I think the rest are generally fine. Our instants also are kind of fine. I like that we have some protection, uh, some counter magic. I like that, I feel like we have a little too many of these untapped permanent spells, and the one that comes to mind the most, I think, is Psychic Puppetry that I'd like to get rid of. I don't think we're playing any other arcane cards as far as I can tell, so we're really just playing that card fairly, and it's not really a card I want to play fairly. So I think that is easy, easy to cut. After that, Coral Reef, I have read this card so many times, and I really don't think this is our tapping that we want. I'm gonna give you much better uh, abilities. This is too much mana, we gotta sacrifice islands. I don't like it. It does increase the toughness of our creature, and I do like that, but there's a limit on how that's gonna be useful. Eventually, there's just gonna be some, you know, non-toughness-based removal that can destroy our creature, and I would have just wished it was like Intervene or um, sp uh, Shore Up, oops, or Shore Up instead. There's also is Dispel a common? I don't know. I wonder if Dispel can be played as well. All right, those are the general pressure points of the deck. The other thing is, outside of Tidal Terror, I do think the deck has kind of a hard time finishing the game. So I want to add some things that give us, you know, even more advantage, but also at least one card that's also at this kind of power, that we can do something that's not just milling our opponents out uh, over time. Otherwise, I generally like the deck, and I'm pretty much ready to go into, um, yeah, go into addition. Sorry, I was just looking at Cavern Whisperer. Yeah, I want to go into addition. So let's let's just get started. Uh, the first thing I would want a little more of is bounce abilities. Now, there's two extremely good ones we'll get to that I think are just necessary in the deck. But I think there's a few that like uh, uh, that have caught my eye that I think are just worth playing, and then um, you could play more like Unsummon and the like. Now, the thing that makes these cards really, really good is that these Unsummons 
can kind of deal with the fact our opponents, when they start top decking and they're hellbent, they're just gonna slam down whatever they grab. So what you can end up doing is using these bounce spells to bounce their permanents, you know, those really important cards, uh, their creatures back into their hand, and then use the Burglar Rats or Siren of the Silent Song to discard it out of your, their hands. All of a sudden, these unsummon effects, these bounce effects become removal, which I think is very, very good. So Repeal is just a really easy one that hits any permanent that I particularly like. Mana War is a card I love. It's in my cube. It's a card that's always, always good, I think very very simply etb bounce something and then you have the means to discard it out of their hand we're going to come back to mana war for a specific combo but i think it is very very strong now let's get to the two really really good ones and these were banishing knack and retraction helix these two cards do the exact same thing to end of turn turn a creature bounce a permanence bounce a permanence to its owner's hand both of these cards are just amazing so what do we do with these cards? Well, what's kind of interesting with our plan with Freed from the Real is that we have to use a blue, or we have a crew card at least to do this as well, to tap down our creature. Banishing Knack gives uh, Siren of the Silent Song a tap ability for free, right? It's just tap, and then we pay one blue to untap her and immediately reap the benefits. It is also a bounce ability. So by bouncing something, we are putting that card back into your, their opponent's hand, and then by untapping our Siren, we are then discarding out uh, that card out of their hand. So Banishing Knack is, and uh, Retraction Helix are so, so strong. As long as you have blue mana, which you might wanna play high tide because you can, as it is common, to kind of make this easier to do, but as long as you have blue mana, you are bouncing all of your opponent's uh, boards back to their hand and then you are immediately discarding all of them that is insane when you really think about it right it is a one-sided board clear that also mills them what like six seven cards right now you need a lot of mana to make that happen but i really do like that there's two cards that allow us to do this and at worst this is something that can work with a few of our untappers to get a few extra bounces in the same way though obviously freed from the real is the one we want uh, mystical teachings is something that i saw uh, a few lists were playing this and i think it's interesting it's kind of more for i would say control lists but it's just such a powerful card that is actually a common when it was printed I think in Modern Masters. So because of that, we can use it. So it's a four mana instant tutor spell that also has flashback. And I think that's just very, very strong. You have a lot of very good instants. You can use this to protect your commander. You can use this to um, grab certain combo pieces that we'll get to. And you're just gonna have a pretty good time casting this spell. Muldrifter is just something I think is kind of missing here. Uh, it's just a fantastic card. I don't think I need to explain it too much, but it's divination with a 2-2 body. If you flicker it, which we'll get to, you'll be pretty happy. Drawing cards, it'll be great. Um, Read the Bones is also notably missing here. If I'm suggesting it for regular commander, you can bet your bones that it's good in Popper EDH for sure. And then the last two kind of suggestions I have here are Dimmer Machinations and Drift of Phantasms before we get into uh, another combo I want to talk about. But both of these cards, I saw them in a bunch of lists because they both transmute. Actually, I didn't check if these were uncommons. Yeah, that one's an uncommon. So Drift of Fan a Phantasm is the one that I just searched for uh, <laughs> first uh, transmute three. So that's on me. But Drift of Phantasm, because the other one's already in your deck um, to transmute for three mana. So you should play this one as well with the express purpose of transmuting into free, uh, free from the real. That's the main idea. What was the other one you're playing? Perplex, which some people might see and say this is bad in this deck, because it is, but we're only using it for the transmute. Just another copy to get freed from the real back into our hand, or back into my back into your hand, into your hand in the first place, so that we can combo off.
coming over here, the last thing I really want to add is just kind of a value play and it's Ghostly Flicker. Ghostly Flicker just hits a lot of our discard creatures. It allows them to work at instant speed. Therefore, after an opponent at the end of their draw step, if we desperately need them to discard that card, Ghostly Flicker will uh, trigger it. Or it also works with like Mull Drifter to draw two cards, Mana War to bounce something. Just generally a very, very good card. And you may have seen this coming it is a combo with Archeo Mancer. When you play in a lot of these in popper and especially at lower power uh, popper, uh, like commanders and things like that, this kind of combo is really hard to interact with, especially if your opponents have discarded all of their hands, where you will go sleep a flicker, Archeo Mancer, and one other card. Archeo Mancer comes back in, brings the ghostly flicker back into your hand, and then you get a free bling of whatever it is, Mull Drift to draw to, Mana Ward to bounce, etc., etc. I think this is a very, very good combo um, with a lot of the cards here, and I think you're just going to be very happy using it. And then with that, there's actually, I wonder, there is another card that has the same text, Exile 2 targets, and I wonder if that one is common. It is. So if you wanted, you could also use Displace as another copy. Now, this is kind of leaning more into the combo or value factor, but the thing is, this deck kind of has a really hard time closing the game, so I really do recommend these kind of ways to make the most of the creatures you have and disrupt your opponent's plans even further. With two of these, you have two cards that can you can play uh, or you can hold on to. Uh, you can play one and hope to get the uh, Archaeomancer to bring it back into hand and have the other one in hand to bounce it should something go wrong. Uh, you could also build this deck a little more defensively with more uh, defensive counter magic, but I think either way, playing Archaeomancer is going to be a really, really good idea. Then the last thing I, I said before, I think what I did, I wonder if I can just hit back. I can't. Um, what I was doing, I literally just looked into blue commons and what was what had the highest power. There might be some black ones too, but I figured blue would get a little higher because they tend to have like sea serpents and things like that. And Scav Goliath was one of the higher ones and it had evasion with trample. A lot of the other serpents require, have needs to attack like your opponent has an island or something. Scav Goliath is just really, really strong and the cost is pretty low. So as another finisher in a deck where at a certain point your opponent will be just out of cards and you can just safely drop Scab Goliath and, you know, hope to blank another turn of your opponent's doing anything and just keep attacking with your Siren. I think this is a pretty good card. 6-9 six, uh, six, is really, really hard to deal with. And especially if you're pressuring who you expect to have the most removal, uh, you might have an easy time res uh, resolving this and getting a few attacks in to take them out of the game. So I thought one more would be needed. And that's kind of it. Um, I don't really have much more to say. Like these decks, I think, are kind of easy to get through. They're kind of very general. We don't have to worry too much of understanding the commander. And I do like this. The games are very aggro. We don't have access to a lot of tools. But overall, I like them. I like I like these decks a lot. I think they're really, really strong. I think there's a lot of really cool cards you get to play, like Phyrexian Espionage, which is just such an awesome card that sees no play anywhere because it's kind of just divination, right? Um, but in Commander, it's still not good enough because it's five mana divination with each with a burglar rat effect. But in PEDH, it's just very, very strong. And I do really, really like that. There's a lot of like general kind of things here that I do like. I think the last thing I would say about the deck is if you're looking to diversify a few of our uh, cards, perhaps it might be worthwhile to go a little bit more into what I would consider to be uh, a controlling strategy, um, leaning further into the combo wins and reducing the numbers of uh, support cards such as Pester Might, right? Pester Might, Breaching Hippocamp. These cards are really, really cool for kind of cute things where you get to untap your commander at instant speed. But four mana is kind of a lot for that. And Pester Might, even as a 2-1 flying, is also kind of a lot for that. I will admit, once again, I do like at least Pester Might with Ghostly Flicker because that's just another trick that you can cast. But I think we are reaching kind of the limit of those abilities and that it's just kind of fine 
to have a few less and build your hand over time. As I said before, I think for sure, um, discard, get rid of your single target discard if you can. I just don't think it's going to do much. Um, but the rest looks really, really nice. Yeah, I feel like these videos have been short, but not bad. Has the bounce lands, have they always been? Yeah, they're all common. Okay, cool, 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 cool. All right, oh, there goes my phone. I think that's all I'm gonna say. I'm just looking for anything else that, uh, that I think is worth putting up, but no, this, um, I have seen also lists playing, I think it was just worth mentioning, the, the, the Drake, the five mana Drake that untaps lands. And I guess that's just also good with Dimmer Aqueduct, so you can just go positive on every bounce, but I don't know if you can do that in Popper. Sorry, I'm just thinking out loud. I'll, I'll leave that to the side for now. I think the deck's great. Thank you so much for sending these. I'm hoping at another time I can go back and kind of play more of these and like go on to it. And I think as a bonus at the end of the video, and I'll mention this in another video, something else I've been thinking about is I wonder if people would be interested in if I uploaded some Commander games. At this point, the setup would be probably off of MTGO. I could... Something I've watched a few other card game like channels do that I really do like. I watched, uh, um, it's gonna be embar embarrassing, I don't remember his name, I think his name is Renat or something, he plays like Hearthstone. And he was doing like challenge decks to try to win games with like decks that aren't like very good or are very nostalgic and things like that. And I'm I'm gonna gauge interest in something like that because if I can get my uh, MTGO, MTGO account back together, I can like film some games playing with some challenge decks and see if we can win some with some weird commander decks. But. I'll talk about that more in depth at another time. Thank you so much for the deck. I hope I hope this has been helpful. I really like PEDH. I've said that a bunch of times, and uh, I'll just end it there. Thank you so much, and good luck with the deck. Thank you so much for watching. This video is brought to you by viewers like you and people on my Patreon. If you'd like to send me another draft of this deck, or any deck, there is a link in the video description down below. And if you'd like to make your deck one of my donation decks I work on, there is a link there too. Finally, if you'd like to like, comment, subscribe, I would be very appreciative. It helps the channel quite a bit. Thank you and good luck in brewing and building.